Hello everyone, in this video I'd like to go over port configuration through the WebGUI interface of the Kubro Packet Master Series Network Packet Brokers. And the first step in this process is unsurprisingly bringing up our WebGUI interface in a web browser. From there we're going to go to the ports drop down menu and select port configurations and this is going to give us all of our options for configuring the physical ports on our device. The first one here, interface to edit, is a drop down enumerating all of the physical ports on our device showing their interface name, their capable speeds, and the transceiver used. I'm on an EX32 Plus at the moment, so I have 32 ports of 1 or 10 gig, and also two ports of 40 gig. The next field is a description. This is just anything that you feel is pertinent to the configuration of the port or relevant to the connection. So you could have something in here as simple as, you know, packet sniffer if we're connected to our packet sniffer, or if this is some kind of mission critical connection, maybe something like never ever shut down. Below that, we have our speed and duplex options for our port. This drop down shows us um, everything that we have available here. You can see on this one I have 10 gig at full duplex, 1 gig at full duplex, and 1 gig with an auto duplex that's accompanied by this warning do not use behind optical splitters or taps. The reason for that is uh, the TAP is a passive device that is mirroring off a copy of all of the live network traffic that is going through it. So if this port is receiving traffic from one of the monitor ports of the TAP, then having auto duplex set would basically have the packet master try to auto negotiate a duplex with an endpoint that doesn't exist and our port would never come up we'd never see the traffic and we could end up spending a lot of time troubleshooting something that came down to a little simple setting so we throw that warning in here uh, use behind optical taps or splitters select full duplex or half if your device allows it and the configuration calls for it but avoid this unless you want some headaches the next couple options here are these checkboxes, and the first one is Force TX Up, or otherwise known as unidirectional mode. So on a fiber connection, typically a fiber connection isn't going to come up unless it can establish a full duplex connection. Checking this box will override that behavior, and this is going to bring the, uh, the link up regardless of whether it can establish a full duplex connection. So in situations maybe where you're running a single fiber as an output out to a tool, or your RX fiber is coming from your tap and you have a TX fiber going out to a tool and that's causing a, an issue with the link coming up, checking this box should correct that and, and bring all of, the, all of the traffic up. The next two are somewhat related to each other. We optionally can perform a CRC check on the frames going through the port or perform a recalculation of the aired frames that we see. Um, so typically speaking, uh, standard network packet broker usage, we would want to pass all of the raw traffic to our tools so we can see all of these network issues and track down their cause and troubleshoot them. Um, but depending on our application, maybe we don't want arid frames crossing through the packet broker. And in that case, we can drop everything that fails a CRC check. And when we receive some arid frames, we can attempt a recalculation on that CRC just to be sure. Finally, we have our activated checkbox, and this is simply whether the port is up or shut down. Uh, so having this checked, our port is active. Unchecking this and saving it would shut down the port regardless of the connection on that port. So once we have everything looking good, we can go ahead and hit our save button here, and that's gonna make all of these options active. We'll get a little confirmation up here that our settings have succeeded. And that covers everything on this page except for this big orange reboot reboot button that you might have noticed. Um, why would we need a reboot button on a port configuration menu screen? Well, there are certain settings related specifically on this device to the QSFP ports that require a reboot to take effect. And those would be that you'll notice here we have a new option when we select 40 gig QSFP plus, and that is split. And this is either no or breakout cable. And this option is available on all QSFP ports, 40 gig or 100 gig, on the Kubro Packet Master series. Um, and what this allows us to do is take this 140 gig port and break it out into four independent 1 or 10 gig ports, uh, well, interfaces connected through this breakout cable. But we're going to have to reboot the device for this change to take effect. So once we have that setting selected and we hit save, 
you'll notice this parenthetical after reboot shows up in this uh, dropdown that indicates that this, uh, this um, setting is not yet effective, but it would be after a reboot. So in order to finalize that option, we can click our big orange reboot button. And as a little extra safety measure, you're going to have to confirm this before you take your device down for a minute or two. Select yes, the device will reboot, and we'll pick up when this comes back online. Okay, our device has come back online in record time. So going back to this port drop down and selecting port configuration, and we're gonna go down to our interface that we split here, and we're going to see that we now have four additional interfaces titled ETH033-1 through ETH033-4. And they're noted as being a split with a breakout cable capable of one or 10 gigs. Selecting one of these is going to show us all the same options we would have associated with the normal port. Um, it's worth noting that on the pre-G4 devices, uh, the checkboxes for force TX up and checksum check and recalculation aren't going to be there. Uh, these devices are simply going to behave as if force TX up was always on and uh, CRC check and recalculation were off. Um, that's everything regarding our port configuration using the WebGUI interface. So thanks for watching and take care.